this is Jeannie Patel-Thompson from ListenToYourGut.com, and today I'm speaking with uh, an expert on electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic frequencies and everything connected with that. So Magda Havas is Associate Professor of Environmental and Resource Studies at Trent University. She teaches there and also does research on the biological effects of environmental contaminants. Dr. Havas received her PhD from the University of Toronto, completed postdoctoral research at Cornell University, and taught at the University of Toronto before going to join Trent University, um, which is also located in Canada. So, Magda, thanks so much for being here today. My pleasure, Jeannie. Magda, the reason I invited you was that there's so many misconceptions and misinformation when it comes to what is called microwave radiation radio frequency. So we're talking about Wi-Fi, wireless computers, cell phones, Nintendos, Wii's, all of these um, wireless devices. And so I thought I would like to do an interview with someone who is a scientific expert themselves so that when we set the record straight, people know that actually this is a PhD who has done her coursework and teaches in this capacity, and so the information is a lot more trustworthy than someone like me who's just a layperson who's done a lot of research and is quoting a lot of things secondhand. Mm -hmm. So can we get going? I thought maybe we could start with some of these um, misperceptions because this is stuff I've seen um, presidents of telecommunications companies saying live on television. I've seen it in... um, you know, articles written for the BBC, which is supposed to be a super reliable news source. I've seen it in the comments that follow an article, people quoting this back and forth to each other saying, well, you don't need to worry because, now here's the first one, a year sitting in a classroom near a wireless network is roughly equivalent to 20 minutes on a mobile phone, which is also a cellular phone. Um, so can you let's let's start with that one and here's the other one and this one is is straight from the BBC the health protection agency in the UK points out that a person sitting in a Wi-Fi hotspot for a year would be exposed to only the same amount of radiation from a 20 minute cell phone call. Mhm. I've heard the same one, yes. What do you have to say to that? Well, first of all, um, the, there are different types of Wi-Fi uh, radiation. Uh, not all the radiation uh, coming from uh, routers is as high as it, it, it is in some environments. The wireless routers that we're putting into schools are some of the more, most powerful ones. They reach the greatest distances. So in most cases, they're more powerful than something you would have in your home, for example, where you might use it you know, over a period of you know, three or four rooms and it has to go through one or two walls. So the Wi-Fi, uh, the radiation from Wi-Fi varies depending on, on the type of system you have set up, whether it's an industrial-grade system as it is in some schools or whether it's uh, a system for a small home. So that's one thing that we have to differentiate between. The other thing is that when you have a wireless router for Wi-Fi in, your, in, your, in a building or in a room, the highest levels of radiation are going to be right where the antenna is, and the antenna is usually put slightly above head height, uh, just below you know, the ceiling on a wall. And so the people who are going to be closest to that will be the ones that are most exposed. And if you have a multi-story building, the person most exposed might be in a different room. They might be in the room immediately above where the antenna is. The other hot spot in a, in a room is going to be very close to the antenna on your computer that you're using to communicate with the antenna in the room. And so you're within, you know, one, one or two feet at the most from that antenna. And so every single time your antenna, your computer is receiving information, it's downloading information or transmitting information, that's when you're going to have optimal dispo- uh, exposure, maximal exposure. And if you have a classroom with 30 plus students downloading and uploading information to the internet, that's when you're going to have very, very high levels. And those levels, uh, once again, depending on the type of the of, um, uh, strength uh, Wi-Fi you have, can be extremely high, much higher than what you would be exposed to by simply holding a cell phone to your head for 20 minutes. And you've got to remember that kids are in these classrooms for six hours a day, day in and day out, whereas, um, you know, you're using the cell phone for a few minutes a day 
ideally, you know, less than that, but uh, just a few minutes a day. So it's very hard to compare the two of them, but my, my concern is primarily for the long-term low-level exposure rather than just a few minutes a day on a cell phone. Right. And so can you clarify for me, because I know uh, before I started doing my research, because my, my children's school has wireless Internet, and I thought, okay, well, as long as my kids are not working on the computer, they should be okay. And then I did some more research, and I thought, well, no, they're not, because there's there are four routers throughout their school, right. and they are on all day long. So my children are receiving radiation at you know, varying levels throughout mm-hmm. the entire day, whether they're on a computer or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and, now, I've so, never been able to measure the wi- Wi-Fi radiation in the school because schools won't allow me inside. Right. We, we actually set up a meeting in a, a school in Toronto where uh, one young girl became uh, quite ill. She passed out um, when she was actually standing very close to um, an antenna. She didn't realize it, and she simply collapsed in the hallway. And she's done that a number of times now. Um, the parents contacted me. Um, I asked if I could go into the school to find out what the levels of radiation were. And initially they said yes, and then as they spoke amongst themselves, they said, you know, we really don't want to know. We don't want you in the school to do the measurements. So I haven't don't been able want to, to know. They don't want to know. No, no, because once well, they know. Well, of they don't. <laughs> exactly. They become liable once they know. And so as long as you can, you can act like an ostrich and keep your head, you know, in the sand, then, you know, you can pretend that it's not there. And that's, that's very irresponsible as far as I'm concerned, especially when we're dealing with the health of young people. <laughs> 